Hey everyone, welcome. Anthony Sequera here with Stormwind.com. It's great to see all of our live audience members. We are in session eight right now of IINS. For those of you interested in Cisco certifications, this is of course CCNA Security. And it's time to wrap it all up in this particular session, session number eight, with a look at one topic. We'll do it over our two parts. We'll take a break, of course, during this, but it's all really one topic for us to wrap up with, and that is VPNs. Yeah, the fundamentals of VPN technologies and secure connectivity. We know that so many individuals out there today and corporations are excited to take advantage of virtual private networks. We are going to explore them in great detail. You'll know why they're such a desirable component of the modern network, and you will understand exactly the technologies that go about in creating them. What is a VPN? A VPN is a virtual network between two organizations. You see, look at this right here. Let me get my marker out here so you can see this. So look at this business partner right here. Okay, that's a partner of our company. And they have a router, and that router is maintaining a connection with our main site. It's represented by this dotted line. Notice it is going through a cloud. This is just an internet service provider's network. It is private because of something called IPsec. Yeah, IP security makes this connection private. So you have this virtual network between these two routers. This network is private thanks to IP security and they can exchange information just like they are within the main site itself. It's like all of this stuff over here is located over here. Yeah, because it's a virtual connection and the virtual connection is made private thanks to the technologies. We are trampling all over the internet here, aren't we? We're trampling all over the internet with our own corporate traffic and we're acting like the internet is ours to do with what we want. And I suppose for that reason, some internet purists would be very upset with virtual private network technologies. Why is this such a great thing? Well, think about it. The first thing that comes to mind is cost. Yeah, we are building this appears to be private network between any of our locations out there in the world, and we're doing it for just the cost of an ISP connection. Here in my part of the world, you can get that ISP connection for as low as $22 per month. Heck, there's even ways to get the internet connection free. So this low cost is a huge driver. How about scalability? Yeah, how about as we add more sites that need connectivity, we go ahead and take advantage of VPN configuration so it scales nicely. Compatibility. Yeah, this works with just about any type of environment you could imagine. A small office, home office, a mobile user, a branch office. And, of course, we can add security to this. It's technically optional, but it's so often that we want to secure the information that we're transmitting over the scary Internet. Now, what are the type of VPN structures that we can build? What are the type of architectures that we can build? Well, when you are interested in doing a virtual private network like we've described so far, there are two main models. There's the site-to-site -site model and there's the remote access model. The site-to-site -site model is like headquarters and here's some branch office and here's some satellite office. And they need to have pretty much constant VPN connectivity between each other. And this is called our site-to-site -site model. But if you've got a bunch of people that are working from client locations and hotels, and they just need to sometimes dial up, we still call it, 
to the headquarters site and do a secure VPN, we call this the remote access model. Now, please keep in mind that these are both going to be implemented these days with this really awesome suite of protocols called IPsec. But maybe we implement this instead, the, the remote access, with an SSL type of technology. We'll talk to you more about that. And then there are other technologies like MPLS that are based on different layers of the OSI model that we can implement. So there's lots of virtual networking technologies these days. Yeah, lots of virtual networking technologies. Many of them, like IPsec and SSL, are considered virtual private network technologies because they help secure the infrastructure. Look at there's a lot of other ones here that fit into various layers of the architecture that we won't talk about, like PPTP or L2TP. So trust me, this is a vast, vast area of discussion. But here in the associate level discussion that we'll have in IINS, we'll keep this fairly constrained the scope of our discussion on these VPNs. Okay, well let's go ahead and take a look at that site-to-site -site VPN a little bit better. Wow, look at this. So we have a central site and the central site can use a variety of devices to initiate the site-to-site -site VPN. Here's a Cisco adaptive security appliance. Here's a Cisco iOS router, okay? Both of those devices could form the VPN with the remote site. Notice the remote site, they have a router and they'll do a DSL or cable connection. This particular device here, a couple of different devices of routers at a branch office site. Here we have some partner and they just so happen to have an adaptive security appliance from Cisco. So you notice, very flexible in the devices that we're going to use for the site-to-site -site VPN. You know what's also very powerful about them? Let me show you. Here's something that's very powerful about these. I'm tired of writing in red. Let's do a different color, shall we? I like blue. All right, so watch what's very powerful. You see this adaptive security appliance right here? This ASA has all of these users behind it. Look at that. A whole building worth of people that need to get to stuff that is over here. They all are able to make that connectivity through the ASA. Yeah, each one of them doesn't need specialized software to make the VPN connection. They just make sure the ASA can make the VPN connection and then they all access the resources they need from a central site through that ASA. So this is so awesome. The ability to build this site-to-site -site VPN and have potentially all the users accommodated that we need. Now notice this. Here's the remote access VPN. This is our evolution of dial-up networking. And you can see, once again, at headquarters, we can do this with an ISA or we can do it with a plain old router. I say plain old router, but obviously the router needs the appropriate software installed in order to allow the creation of these VPNs. But it's not rare to have this in our iOS router. And now, sure enough, our remote access clients can make their connections through. Maybe they're using DSL. Okay, maybe they're using cable modem technologies. And notice they don't need a router or an ASA. Yeah, they're just going to have software called the Cisco AnyConnect client or some other VPN software in order to make the connection whenever they need it. In fact, let's think about it. Isn't there software built into Windows? Yeah, I think there's software built into Windows for VPN work if I wanted to just do a quick remote access connection. Let's check this. Let me open the, whatever they call it these days, the network and sharing center inside of Windows 7. And let me go and create 
a new connection or network. And it brings up this wizard. And it says, all right, connect to a workplace. Set up a dial-up or VPN connection to your workplace. I choose next. It says, how do you want to do this? Well, I want to use my internet connection. And it says, okay, what is the address we want to connect to? And maybe it's 64, 58, 95, 102. Okay, and then we got some options here we can uh, choose. Now we choose next, and we're going to give the username and password information that our administrator set up for us. So while we can use Cisco's AnyConnect product, Keep in mind, there's software built right into Windows for making your dial-up VPN connection. Obviously, you need your administrator up at the headquarters to set up what we call the head end of that connection. They need to set up the IP address on the ASA or the router that you're going to connect to. They need to set you up with a username and password to use the VPN and all of that good stuff.